plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Oh my god. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at feed and expansion tanks and the systems that they feed and how they work. Uh, we're going to go up into a loft and show you one in situ and so you can have a look at that and be marvelled by like the positions people put them in. Like, let's imagine that this is the loft bit here and this is the roof. This is the ceiling running across here and there's your loft area there. You'd put the tank here, wouldn't you? But no, loads of people just always oh, put them right over there. Miles away. And I'm not going to put any lights up in there and then I'm going to cover it in rock wall. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for that. Anyway, so firstly, let's have a look at how they work. I don't know where the whiteboard's gone. It's disappeared. So we're going to use a bit of wood. Don't none of you be saying that I don't help you guys out. I'm using wood. Right then, so you've got your boiler here, right? You've got your flow, you've got a pump, you've got, let's say this is an S-plan, so you've got two motorised valves, okay? And then you've got your coil for your cylinder, going back to your boiler, and also you've got a couple of radiators on the system, upstairs and downstairs. Let's make it Let's make it a nice little two-pipe system as well, as they say, in the world of the fens, and a common return. Everything going round like that, lovely. Now, we draw a line up here. Above this line is the loft, a place where no man should venture unless they really have to because it's complete grief. No one ever has fun in lofts. So, up in the loft we have a tank. We're going to shape this tank like that. It's like that, okay? It's that big. In the tank we have a cold water feed, call it CWF, with a ball valve. Ball valve. So the water level is there. You have either a bottle that is a larger size bottle that allows the water and air to split slightly when it's filling up and gives the air a chance to go upwards. Off the top of that, this pipe here, which is the expansion pipe. Now, this is where people get a bit silly. You have the feed pipe. There'll be a hole in the bottom of this tank here, below the water level, and that will go along and should really go down into here, okay? So you're feeding water down into the system, okay? Not all the time, just when it needs it. So there's a leak. You'll sometimes see the ball valves dropped a little bit and there'll be a drip going on. Then your nose starts to twitch. You'll be like, hmm, there's a leak. Better sort that out, hadn't I? A lot of people, though, what they'll do is they'll be lazy and they'll just put this into here, okay? They'll put this into the side of the expansion pipe because they're all the same system. So, if we thought about it like this, the water level across the whole system is like that. Now, as we've said in our video about pressurised heating systems, when you heat cold water up, the molecules and the particles in the water start to get more and more excited and active. You know, like ministry of sound, it's going mental. So these particles start moving more and basically the water body expands. Now, as we've said in a pressurised system, you have an expansion vessel in that that takes that expansion. We're not here. That's why we've got this thing here, the expansion pipe. Right, so the water level is just about here when it's cold. Now, when these, this all comes on and these radiators and everything heats up, the, the expansion is not enough to be able to push on this body of water here. But it will be able to push slightly up this pipe here a little bit. So you put the crook high enough so it can go up a little bit, but not so high that it goes into the system. But if you do have a problem and it's over-expanding or anything like that, it's going to run up here and safely go into your tank if it gets really bad, the water level will come up and you have an overflow pipe, probably about here, that will run off outside and out of the house. Right, so if we wanted to drain one of these systems out, it's really, really easy to do. There's usually a valve on the cold water feed here. Turn that off, go to the lowest point in the system. You'll often have one on the boiler and you'll find a drain cock. Then you can undo the drain cock there, take your hose outside and the water level will drop out of here, drop out of there, drop down out of here and drop down slowly out of the system as you drain it out. Now the next thing you have to do is you have to open up any of the bleeds on the radiators and also obviously make sure the system's switched off. You know, I should have said that, shouldn't I? I've said it now. And what happens is, is that when you open up the air bleeds on the radiators, it allows air into the system and allows the water to actually drop out and leave the system. If you don't do that, it's very much similar to if you go to McDonald's, which I never do because the food is minging, so if you imagine having a McDonald's straw and you put it into your Coca-Cola or your Sprite if you're me, uh, you put your finger over the end, lift it up, there'll still be Coca-Cola in that straw. That's because you haven't opened the bleed key at the top of the radiator, which is your finger. Now, you lift your finger up and the Coca-Cola or the Sprite will fall out the bottom of the straw just like that. And that is basically what you're doing when you open up one of these. 
So then you drain all the system out, you do the whatever work you need to do, and then before you do anything else, you shut them up and everything. Remember to latch open any three port or two port valves when you're doing any work. That'll open them valves up and water will be able to get out of the system. So you've done all your work. The next thing you do is you keep your valves latched open, shut up your radiators, you shut up your drain key, and then you go up in the loft, to turn your tap back on, water will start coming out into here. It, the water level will rise up again in here. Water will start to come down in here. The system will fill up. And then what you'll do is you'll go to each radiator and you'll vent each rad and make sure it's working and you'll make sure everything's okay there. Obviously you could also use these tanks to put inhibitor in. I prefer not to do it because I always get this funny feeling that even if you've drained the tank out and everything there's always like an inch's worth of water in the bottom. You pour your inhibitor bottle in it sort of doesn't all go in. I'm much more of a fan of injecting the inhibitor into the system into a radiator or something like that. So another thing we need to think about is how to pull a vacuum on one of these systems. It can be done. It's kind of bum tremble time. I'm not really a big fan of doing it. If you can drain the system out, just do it like that. There's no point putting a vacuum, but we'll have a look into it anyway. So like we were saying earlier on, if you have your finger over the straw at the top and there's all water in it, water cannot come out. There's no air getting into the top of the system. What you can do is you have a bung kit and basically they're just a rubber torpedo. Let me get one from the van. I can't find it and it's freezing out there. So anyway, it's a basically a small rubber torpedo shaped thing. Yeah, so what you do, right, you have two of them. You stick one in the hole on the outlet here and you stick one over the expansion and that means this side of the system and all this is sealed off from here. No air can get in, no water can get in. You open up your, your drain cock here and the water will just hold in the system because there's a vacuum being pulled on it. It can't fall out of the system because there's nothing going in the top of it to replace what's falling out. So anyway, let's have a look upstairs in the loft. Right, so here we are up in the loft. This is the F&E tank for the heating system. You can always kind of tell it because it's a lot smaller than the feed tank you'd have for your hot water tank, which is up here. All right, so let's have a look at the three or four pipes that go into this. First, we've got our cold feed here. Uh, works in a ball valve that at the moment looks, is completely underwater at the moment, so it's not very happy. Uh, so we're gonna have to sort that out. That's probably gonna need a bit of adjusting. So there's our ball valve here. This is our ball valve fill up, so that drops will come into the system. Uh, we've also got a uh, overflow here. This is the overflow pipe. So if this fails like it is at the moment, uh, is that, that's actually in the end gonna go up and over into that overflow there like so, okay? So you can see the ball valve there is not very happy and it's having an absolute mare. Down there in the dark murk, if you can see it just there, is the outlet pipe. That goes off to the heating system and feeds cold water into the heating system, okay? So when you're draining the system down, the water level in this tank here is gonna drop and if you haven't turned the ball valve off or tied it up, it's gonna drop and start feeding the system automatically. Also at the top of the system here, we've got our expansion pipe. So yeah, this is what you pretty much the basic components of an F&E tank upstairs in the loft. The tank we were talking about is basically just above there in the loft, above the ceiling, okay? Now this big pipe here is the expansion pipe that went up and over into the tank. And this small pipe here is the feed cold pipe that came out the bottom of the tank. So what you've got, you've got the hot water flow, the heating flow coming up from the boiler system here and it's being pumped round here and then back down there. Now, the idea is, is that when you fill up, expanding water can get up there, can vent itself nice and easily, and also the feed water can be sucked down into the system at any time. Now, so if you want to drain one of these systems out, okay, say you want to do any work to them, it's, uh, this system here is really, really easy. It's lovely because whoever was here last popped in an isolator valve there from the cold feed from the tank. So if I want to do any work to this system, I can just turn that off, turn the heating system off on here, make sure both of the two port valves are latched open so they fully vent out, and then I can drain the system down from the hose downstairs. So there we go, that's the end of this week's UK video. I hope you found it really, really interesting, really informative. Everyone, come back again. <coughs> Oh, I've got to say as well, 10,000 subs this Sunday. I was cooking a big joint of beef. Actually, I'll tell a lie. My wife was cooking a, was cooking a joint of beef, a rib, 40 quid's worth of beef. But then again, that's lunches through the week and everything like that. Smeared in like mustard powder, salt and pepper and thyme. Uh, and then, yeah, shove that. We were just cooking that and then bang, it came through. Proper parts, 10,000 subs. Thanks to every one of my subscribers. I hope you guys get a lot of help from what we do. Uh, thanks to every one of our nearly 3 million views as well. Uh, it's humbling to know 
that you guys watch all the videos that we do. Yeah, thanks ever so much for all the subscribers again, and uh, I hope to see you all in next week's video or whenever we do the next one, which will be an Ask the Plumber. All right, we're going to the driving range next week. There's going to be other people there watching us film while we're in the driving range. So imagine that, all right? Um, so yeah, anyway, have a great week, uh, and I'll see you guys all very soon. And remember, everyone, to hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice.